Alex has to get out there and build another stove, so we have to let it go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you all for coming uh, this morning. It's um, I like I said, I wish I could meet all of you in person, but I guess this is our new normal getting together by Zoom. I, I feel like we're getting better at this and it's starting to feel less weird, but it's still always a little weird. <laughs> uh, if, I'm excited to be here. I've been with Stove Team since last September. It's almost my year anniversary, but I'm here in the new position as executive director. And I couldn't be more excited to be in this role and to be leading this organization. I love Stove Team and I have since the moment I heard about the mission. I live in Portland and when I saw the job description, it was in Eugene and I thought, damn it, why can't this job be in Portland? I, <laughs> this is the perfect job. And then I kept I kept thinking, I can't apply for that job, but it just wouldn't go away. And I just kept thinking about it. And then finally I thought, I'll just send in my stuff and see what happens. And here I am today. So luckily they, they allowed me to keep working in Portland and it's been, it's been wonderful. Um, like I said, I love this organization. I'm excited to carry on Nancy's passion and to work to, continue to work to improve the health and opportunities of families in Latin America through safe, affordable, fuel efficient cook stoves. And um, it's fun for us to have this opportunity today to reconnect with you and honor, um, also to honor the Endless Summer Party, which is normally a wonderful event that we have in Nancy's backyard. It's a time to honor um, Aunt Nancy's late husband, Duffy, because it's his birthday, but also to honor the, the work that Stove Team has done throughout the year. And so we just wanted to get together with you today to kind of give you a little update on what we're doing, what we've been doing through the COVID pandemic. And um, we have Alex in the field and he'll, he'll be there to kind of sh to show you a little bit about our most recent project. And um, we just wanted to open it up to Q and A for you, for you to ask us what what questions you might have, what we're working on, and um, then we have a fun little trivia competition at the end where you can win exciting stove team hats. So. <laughs> um, I just wanted to, I'll just give you a, a little update on, on the projects that we've been working on. Um, it's been an interesting five months since the COVID crisis hit, but our small staff has been very busy. We've had to reinvent ourselves and retool our, our work several times over, but um, we've, we've, like I said, we've been very busy. When our three of our four factories closed down, we, got to work raising money uh, to, to, to support our factory workers in um, El Salvador, uh, Guatemala and Honduras because they were not able to work and not able, no longer able to, to earn money for their families. And we were also able to uh, work with our funders to shift stove orders that we had to Nicaragua, which was the remaining factory that we had open. Um, during that time, we've been working on two exciting pilot projects. One is is um, basically kind of envisioned, and, and we're going to roll it out with our factory partner in Nicaragua, um, who is, you may have followed her story in our newsletter. It's um, Her name is Elida, and she used to work for the factory, but she became the owner of the factory recently. And she has had great success selling and promoting the Ecosina cook stove in her area, um, especially working with women entrepreneurs who are who use the Ecosina um, and its great functionality as a portable cook device, um, selling tortillas. Um, so our factory success package is is a, a project that we're going to try. Uh, different business skills and uh, marketing materials. Try, you know, try things with her factory <clears throat> to see what works. Uh, with the idea that we can roll it out with other factories, um, Forrest has already built a brand new website for Elita's factory, and he's also built a brand new website for our factory partner in El Salvador. 
Um, the other very exciting project that we're working on, and you may have seen it in our newsletter, is the Husta Cook Stove Project. And this is something that it's we're, we're doing it as a pilot um, in Guatemala, where Alex is based. And um, so far, Alex will correct me if I'm wrong, but I know we've done at least 13 stoves, but <laughs> probably. Yeah, today was stove number 18. Yeah, we're on 18. So it's um, basically in a in a nutshell, um, I'm excited about this project because we work directly with the community and with the stove participants themselves. It's been proven in development work that if the recipient of aid has some some participation in the effort, either by pro providing some money or some work in the project that it greatly helps with the adoptability of the project, that they will actually use the project product and take care of it moving forward. And this is a, a stove that was developed um, by Mike Hatfield, our program director, many years ago in um, Honduras. It tests very well and we just we were closed down and Alex was was in uh, Guatemala and so we've he, Mike has had this idea in the back of his head and we said why not let's just try it and see how it works and it's been greatly received so far so we're excited that we have another stove in our stable of stoves that we can get out and our goal is really just to get the best stove in the in the kitchen for that situation and to get our you know our stove recipients to eliminate that smoky open fire. So I'm going to let Alex tell you more about that, that project, but I really just want to thank all of you for being here with us for so many years. This project is, is the, it was an, an idea that came of, and it's a, it's an effort that, that came of Nancy's passion and her determination and, but of so many others. So many board members, so many volunteers over the years, and and it really has been has been carried along by all of you, and we appreciate you so much. So we appreciate you being on this call, and there's a lot more work to do. So we're just going to keep doing it throughout the year. So I'm going to hand it over to Alex, and the real star of the show, and. <laughs> <laughs> and so we'll Forrest, <laughs> so Forrest, you have one of my slides. Yeah. There we go. So I'm Alex. I'm based here in Guatemala. Um, and I've been here since March 1st. So this is my effectively my six month anniversary as of today. Um, so I'm, I'm learning the ropes. I'm getting to know the territory and doing a lot of great things. But what I wanted to show you in this um, first slide is I, I actually started my job a couple days before um, March 1st, and I was, I was in El Salvador, I was in Honduras, and then I came to Guatemala on March 1st, right when people were talking about COVID in Italy. But in, in these photos, you can see some of the things that we've been doing, um, like building the Husta stove. Where, um, I've been learning about the Ecosinas. Um, I've been meeting with some of the communities, but I, I think one of the biggest challenges that I've faced over the past six months is getting out in the community and doing what stove team had wanted me to do initially. So I was, I was kind of focused on the educational programs and working in the communities and getting more ecosinas to more people. But with COVID, um, public transit stopped, people were forced in their homes. Um, we used to have quarantine that lasted for days. Um, and, and I think over the past five months, um, my job title has changed. Um, but I can say what we're doing now is more effective. We have better synergy between our staff members and we're, we're helping more people. We've just had to adapt to um, what's happening in the world. Um, next slide, Forrest. So, as you can see in this photo, these are the Husta stoves that we've been building. And what we've done in these, these four pictures is shown a black and white photo of what their stove situation used to look like 
to what their stove situation looks like now. And it's been a fascinating road up until this point because we're doing a pilot project. So we're learning about, you know, what we should do, what we shouldn't do. And there are little tweaks and changes on a daily basis. But I would say something that has been really exciting for me in the field, I've been able to help with those changes and talk to the ladies in the community. So I, I chose to live in the village of Santiago Zamora. There are about 1,200 families, 800 families more or less in this area. So I've gotten to know everyone on this, on this um, slide by first name. And people know me, I live here permanently, and people have started to see a face with Stove Team. And I think that's something that Stove Team, well, that was a challenge for Stove Team in the past because no one was permanently here um, for a long period of time except for a trip. So when I first arrived, people would ask me, so are you staying for a week and then you're going back to America? And I would say, no, I'm going to stay here. So now with all of these women, I see them on a daily basis. They tell me about their stove. They tell me about how they love the larger plancha top or the stove top. So they can use, um, well, they don't have to use the open fire. Um, they can only use their plancha and they're happy to do all of their cooking. So every one of these families are happy. And today we just built a stove um, in a household of a lady who is deaf. And she had come to me and knocked on my door one night at about 9 p.m. and said, I want a stove, I want a stove, I want a stove. And she had written it down on a piece of paper and she just kept pointing at it. And I said, don't worry, I'll get you in the list for a stove. And today was her day that we went to her house. Her family had gathered all of the materials and when I <clears throat> left the stove building site about three minutes ago. The stove was almost ready, but I said, I have a call to be on, so I'll have to take the final picture later this afternoon. So we're excited about the Husta project. We're excited about the other factories. We're also excited about the other stoves that we work with, but we're also looking at ways to um, help the people in the community with the stove that fits their needs. So I'm, I'm going to leave it, my section, up to the next person, or we can open it up, Shelby, to questions or trivia. Yes. So, Forrest, do you want to explain how the Q&A is going to run? <clears throat> yeah, let's do some Q&A. We'd love to take all your questions, anything you've been wondering, anything you want to ask us, um, or comments, of course. But to keep it kind of organized, uh, we want to do it through the, the chat function. So it's at the top right. It looks like a little comment box. If you click on that, you can write a comment. That'll go to everybody. I'll read your comments out, and we'll, um, our staff will answer them as best as we can. We'll open it up for questions now. And if you, if you have any questions about that process, feel free to unmute and let us know if something's not working. Hey, Alex, actually, while people are writing their first question, do you want to just give a little overview of the Husta project, like how it works and just the steps? Sure, I'll be happy to do that. So <laughs> right now for Santiago Zamora, what we're doing is we're offering a stove to people that would fit their price range. That's one thing. So I have a team of two workers who how they start out, they go from house to house and they announce the stove and they show a brochure that Stove Team has created. And what we say is um, families need to build a base according to the specifications of, um, you know, what we, we've asked them to do. So they build the base with cinder blocks and cement and they fill it with... Um, either dirt or with cement if they choose. But then what we, what I also have is I also have an administrator, like a receptionist, and she calls the families to program the date that we're going to go to their house and build, build a stove. So each stove takes about four hours to build. 
Um, my workers have chosen to start working at 7 a.m., which is a little bit early for me. But they go at 7 a.m. to the house. They start. And usually what I do is I come around 10 o'clock, 10, 15, 10, 20. And I go and ask a series of questions and put a GPS tracking coordinate on the stove so that in the future, as we do follow up, as we do surveying and checks and check up the chimneys and this and that and other problems, we have a spreadsheet list of what I'm doing, what, what I have done. And, and in the future, Forrest can make a map of all the stoves that we put in the field. So the families are very excited. The plancha stove is something that is in the field already, but this style is a bit different from what they're used to. And they're also liking the, the four hours in the house of communicating with um, the family, the kids, watching them build it. And I'm getting a lot of kind of promotional stories from the field um, just based on, you know, the communication, the connection that we're um, actually bonding with the families. Okay, for everyone who just joined, we're taking Q&A now. We're about to start. Um, to ask a question, we ask that you do it via the chat. So there's a, there's a comment box up at the top right of the screen in the corner. It looks like a little cartoon comment. If you click on that, um, type your question, please, and we will answer it in the order they come in. So the first question is from Julie. Is there a different cost for the Echocena versus the Husta for the family? Alex, do you want to do you want to talk take that one? Sure. So each each factory has um, a different system for pricing, but for the Husta project right now, um, Mike and I are working on the best cost for the actual project. But since we're in a pilot project right now, that cost is changing on a daily basis. I'm looking from, let's say in the past five months, six months, I made a lot of great connections to get really good prices. But the Husta project, um, we're setting the price at $75 because that's covering, um, let's say the materials, the labor to build, um, and all of our time. Now, the Ecosina, Shelby, off the top of your head, can you remember the price of the Ecosina? We've always said $50 for the Ecosina, but it kind of varies again up to, to you know, depending. It's actually always been a little bit um, more expensive, but Alita in, in Nicaragua has been able to do it for a little bit less expensive. So we've kind of said the Ecosina is basically around $50. Perfect. I, and I think Julie was also asking about the cost to the family. Oh, okay. Um, so also to the family, what I can say, we, we started out um, maybe two weeks ago, three weeks ago, with the cost to the families would be $26 <laughs> in cash plus um, the materials and the labor needed to build the base that we actually build the stove on. So in total, that cost was about $36. And I, I, saw, um, I saw how difficult that might be to sell to people who have not worked in five months, who um, you know, have the ability to buy other things. So I, I petitioned to Stove Team to look at revamping that price. So what we've done for Santiago Zamora is we have bought bricks. Um, and that was something that we were kind of testing. Should we buy bricks in the future? Should we buy bricks now? Because in other models that we've looked at, the families pay almost nothing, but they're bringing in more materials to the table, like bricks, like um, rebar, they're, build, or they're bringing in cement, they're also building their base. So what we wanna do in our project is have buy-in from the family, which means they should be able to, to buy materials locally, bring it to their house, and then when one of my stove builders goes, they can use all of these materials to build the stove very quickly. So I would say 
as of right now, the families are paying thirteen dollars in cash. Um, they're also paying for their base, which probably cost about ten dollars. So that would be thirteen, ten, twenty-three. So I would say they're spending about twenty-five dollars for their materials to prepare. But in the future, we would like to look at a better system of what people should pay and how it can be more effective. I want to jump ahead. Nancy asked a question that has to do with your answer just now. She asked, does sure. the $25 include what the family pays for the bricks? Yeah, um, yes. So as of right now, the 100 quetzales or $13 is the cash contribution. And that includes the price of the bricks. Now, what we're looking at right now is in the future, the families will supply the bricks. Um, but what I've been noticing, and this is, you know, a free market economy technique, bricks are very cheap from a brick factory that's far away. But what's being sold closest to my house is almost double the price of what we bought the bricks for. So in the future, what I would like to do is talk and collaborate with the municipalities to figure out if there's a brick source that's local or close by or there's no bricks possible. And also, I would say for the Husta project, for communities that have adobe bricks like earthen bricks, we can use those to build the base and we can also look for other substitutes. But the community that I live in, in Santiago Zamora, people don't use adobes. Um, so it's, it's a challenge that we will soon come to when we go to more communities. Great. Carissa asks, is the factory in Guatemala operational now to help with the Gusta stove? So I can take this. Um, so like it, we said, in, uh, in the moment, we're doing a pilot project. So in the beginning, Mike has gone and spoken with all of our factory partners about the Husta project. They all know that we're doing this and it's been explained to them that this is a pilot project. We're focusing on Guatemala because that is where Alex is. And so we're hoping that in the future, this is something that, the, that there will be space for the factory owners to do this. I think the 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 idea eventually down the line is that the factory owners would be sort of like Alex, like a, a manager of the project. Um, at the moment, we are we're in the pilot and we're very um, dedicated to kind of figuring out what the best process is and to kind of building the mold of the process because one of the great things about this project is that there we work with the community on the front end we're working with the with the municipality we're getting a list of people who want to go into a um, who want the stove in a community because we we would like to be able to cover 80 to 100 percent of an entire community so we get buy-in from from the beginning then we work with the the individual stove recipients and there's follow-up afterwards so that there's you know if if the pieces of the stove break or the chimney breaks there's there's a complete circle there so so that we are we're doing education throughout the entire effort there's follow-up and we're able to the recipients have a means to you know repair their stove if it's broken they have a means to ask questions so we're kind of in the process of designing the project right now right now alex is pretty much managing this on his own he's been in communication with marco at the in the the factory in guatemala but um and he did get some of the the pieces from for, to build the the end the inside combustion chamber um, from the factory. So we're kind of testing everything out right now, and and really just building that mold so that we have when we're ready to kind of launch this after the pilot project. We've we have figured out all of the ins and outs. We've made all of the mistakes, 
and we can cut we can then open up a conversation with our factory partners about how they can get in on this with us so so at the moment it's basically really Alex working he's he's working with some of the workers who he he borrowed from the factory in the in the beginning he's trained them and and now he's kind of doing this kind of you know with him being the project manager at the moment I I would also just add that um, something I needed to learn as part of the Husta project, it's to me, it's like a great introduction to what, what I'm doing, but I needed to learn the ropes and the ladders of how to make this work. So, so something that I, I struggled with when I first arrived, I'm, I was working in a factory of people that had been doing this business for many years, but I had very little on the job training of how to make this work for myself, like independently. So this pilot project has been a way for me to make connections in the community, figure out prices, figure out what's possible, do some experimenting. And, and I would say, like Shelby said, when we unveil this project or reveal this project to the other factory owners, we have more... Um, educated backing to say this is how we're going to make it work versus relying on um, our factory owners who have a lot of experience just to do it in their style. Great. Okay. Julie asked, also, are the Hustas built at different heights depending on the person who will be using it? Okay. So I'll answer this one. So we have a safety test that we focus on um, that looks at the height of the chimney from the base of the floor. So that space has to be 90 centimeters. I'm, I, I can't, I'm not good with converting to inches, but one of you can convert. Um, but that's here in Guatemala, we use centimeters and that's why. So what we are doing is we're making sure that the height of that um, or the start of that chimney is 90 centimeters, but different people are asking for different heights of their base. Um, I'll give you a couple examples. We built a stove in a blind man's house who his son said, we want a stove, but we want the cooktop to be at the same level as the open fire. So what we did is we just built the stove very low to the ground. The, the cook stove is at the height of where his open fire used to be, and then his chimney is higher up, so there's less risk of a child burning their hands. The, the other thing I would say is some people are taller and they want a higher base. Some people are very short and they want a shorter base. It depends on the family and the families. We're, we're in collaboration with the families to explain that the base needs to be these dimensions. But if you want to use uh, two cinder blocks to create you know, your height, that's fine. If you want to use three, if you want to use higher. So the funny thing that the families always laugh at, I, I'm almost six foot three. So the families will say, well, what if we want a really short base? Or what, what if we want this? And I always say, well, for me, I would want a base of five blocks, whereas most families are wanting a base of like a block and a half. <laughs> All right, Nancy said, Alex, can you explain what happens after the family builds the base? What's on top? What's on top? Okay. Um, you mean what's on top of the base itself or the yeah. construction of the stove? Um, I think the construction of the stove, what happens okay. after the family builds the base themselves and then you come in and what happens next? Cool. So, so I'll just kind of reiterate the whole process. So we go for Santiago Zamora, we are not in collaboration, let's say with the municipality or, or the mayor to kind of unveil this project. What we've started doing is going house to house um, kind of like a vacuum cleaner salesman that's just saying, this is what we can offer. This is how we do it. This is what you need to do. And this is the price. In the future, I would like to collaborate with a, a representative from the municipality to, to kind of figure out some of 
these logistical challenges before we have to go house to house. But the family builds the stove base. Um, some families have a person in the house that is really good at building and other people find um, like a, a house builder who can take dimensions, materials and build a base in a space that my, my inspectors go in and say, you should build your stove here. So they build the base. Uh, my workers come, they, they usually come at about 7 a.m. The bricks we are using are already in the house because we have a central location where the people go and pick up their bricks. They're picking up 55 bricks per stove. Um, and, and what my workers do is they, they draw out the, the foundational walls of the stove with a pencil, and then they start laying bricks in four levels. So the first level, the second level, the third, the fourth. But what they're doing is they're building the out outside walls. And once that skeleton is built, let's say, they put the, the, the front brick pieces in. That's the combustion chamber of, of fired bricks that are cut to a certain specification. They're also building walls in the stove for the smoke to pass. And then at the very end, they're putting a chimney on the top. So in the future, something that we have talked about as a staff is to, to produce a video um, to show our donors and to show people who are interested how the stove is built. Um, and, and I can talk about it more. I, I would just love to give you a visualization in the future of what the stove looks like at different steps. But pretty much there's four levels of bricks. Um, the families bring in sand and they bring in a half a bag of cement. Those are mixed on their property and used to create the actual stove. And then in the very end, we put a nice big layer of cement on the top. And that forms a barrier between the top layer of bricks and where the plancha is going to sit so that no smoke escapes from the sides. Um, the other thing that we do, kind of the end step, um, we build the stove, we cut the hole in the chimney, we put the chimney up, um, we, get, we get everything set, we put the, um, the cook stove on the stove itself, and then we ask the ladies or the men of the house to start up the stove, and we explain why you need to use the portalina, which is the little metal piece in the front that creates a gap for the air to pass through, and we show the family how do you see in five minutes, three minutes, the plunge is hot and you can start cooking. So I think the whole process of four hours is partly building the stove and explaining how to use it, how to care for it, what not to do, and how great it is for cooking tortillas or, or um, boiling corn for tortilla making. And, and we explain that as part of the process. So I would say we're not bringing a stove, putting it in a house and leaving. It's like we're building a relationship with the family. And, and that's, I think, our goal of Stove Team in getting clean cook stoves to people, but also getting to know them and explaining and educating them. And if anyone's interested in seeing step-by-step -step photos of, of how this new Husta stove is made. We have them on the website under programs. There's an option for Husta stove, and that page has step-by-step -step photographs. All right, Sounds Nancy, good. Nancy asked, who will set the price of the Husta in the future, the factory or stove team? Um, okay, I can answer this again. Um, so we're looking at the price from the stove team side as kind of a Husta project, um, trying to figure out all the bits and pieces to figure out what price warrants what we're actually doing. So, you know, in a perfect world, if I could get materials even cheaper, the price would go down. Um, but I haven't made all of my connections for materials yet. And that's kind of a, the changing process on a daily basis. Now, I'll tell you another thing that I was looking at um, yesterday, for example. The minimum wage of each country is different. So Guatemala is about $400 per month for a nine-hour day, 
six days a week, whereas El Salvador, their minimum wage is almost half of what, of what Guatemala's is. So in theory, if we were following minimum wage, the stove should be cheaper in El Salvador than it would be in Guatemala. But I think we're looking at um, all of these different types of things before we roll it out to the factories. And, and we're also looking at what has been done in the past. So I would say we're, we're trying to find the best price to, to announce to the families as well as to our donors so that we are accomplishing our tasks and making sure that follow-up is happening as well. Great. Carissa asked, who are the workers Alex mentioned? Are they from the factory or the community? Okay, so these workers are people from the factory. And initially when we started this pilot project, um, we did not want to step on Echo Komal's toes. And, and one conversation that we had is, who could I work with to do this pilot project? And at the time, Marco Tulio was the one who said, you should work with this guy. And so I've been working with that guy. His name is Freddie. And over the past, I would say, six weeks, I have been working with him. It started off more like part time. And now I'm working with him full time. The other worker that we work with is a lady called Beatriz. She used to work in the factory as well. Um, she's had about seven years in the factory, but something I've in the scheme of my own project is I have looked for workers and people have come to me and said, I'm interested in doing what you're doing. I haven't gone to the factory and said, I need you to work for me. I need you to work for me. Now, something that Shelby and I have talked about that I think we're really focusing on is empowerment and jobs for the community. So when I first arrived in Santiago Zamora, people used to say, this is a village that's forgotten because there's no industry, there's no real big jobs, there's no um, educational, great educational system of higher education here. So something that the foreigners used to say, my friends in Antigua would say, um, let's try to figure out ways to give jobs to locals. And, and something that Shelby and I have talked about is let me try to find female stove builders because I want to empower the women of the community and show them that from the American system, um, people are equal. So Betty is an independent stove builder as well as Freddie is too. The other worker I have is a local girl that recently graduated in administrative, like administrative sciences. So she's, let's say, a, um, a graduated receptionist administrator of an office, but I was needing someone to answer the phone, to deal with my office, my management of, you know, how many hours this person works, how many stoves can be built at this time, kind of like a question answer person. And she's molded into something greater than that. Great. Julie asked, does the stove really get fired up while the cement is fresh? Okay. So something that we do, Julie, that it's, it's, uh, it's something that I've learned from the field. Initially, my comment that was made to the families was, um, we built the stove, we need to wait two or three days for the cement to dry. But when I talk to other stove projects in the field, I would just say, well, I'm telling families to wait. And they would say, why are you doing that? Get them to fire it up right away. The fire will dry the cement. So I would say something that I'm saying to families is, you know, if you're planning to use that very heavy pot, wait two or three days to do that. But you can go ahead and start cooking on your um, new Husta stove right away. I also want to show the family that it actually works because I think that's a big thing with buy-in. Um, families have cooked on open fires for their whole life and generations from the past. So making sure that they fire up the stove, all of their family says, wow, it actually works. 
and then getting them to use it is something I'm really focused on. So hoping that they'll fire up the stove, see that it works, touch the planta and see that it's hot. And then as their stove dries, it will get, you know, let's say harder and harder um, for fear of cracking and things like that. Another thing that I can tell you about the construction in the top layer of cement around the actual metal griddle, we use a piece of <clears throat> we use a piece of rebar in that piece of cement so that there's less cracking of the cement itself. Great. Nancy asked, are you going to build in some money for profit for a factory? Sorry, I was muted. I can do this. I think that's a question for down the road, like we said, we're still in a pilot right now. Um, I think the most important for us right now is that we set the terms for this project and that the project moving forward has, you know, our requirements, which are um, meeting with meeting with the family, doing the education, doing the follow up. So it will, you know, remain to be seen how the factories fit into this moving forward. If they want to come along and be a part of this and agree to the model, um, then, then you know, I, the factory owners, of course, there will be profit in it for them. These are entrepreneurs. They, they are businessmen, and you know, I don't believe they will do it unless there is profit in there in there for them. So if it just kind of, like I said, we're in the pilot project, we're, we're very concerned about kind of setting the requirements um, for the project, setting the parameters, and then we will be working with the factory partners to see how they fit into that. There, it may be that they're not interested at all because they don't want to, you know, fulfill all of the steps, do the follow-up, do the education. And that's fine. I think if if they are not interested in, in leading and, and implementing this project to our requirements, then I think there's still a place for the factories. They could be, you know, design, designing or building the combustion chamber, for example, and then there would be profit in there for them. So I think we're, we're just in the period of figuring it all out and figuring out how to, you know, move forward with this. And, and that's why we're very focused on Guatemala right now, because that is where Alex is. So I think the bulk of our effort is going to be in Guatemala for this next year moving forward. And we're just going to keep working and, and working out the kinks and figuring out the best system moving forward. But we're, we're still, you know, we, we remain in contact with all of our factory partners. We're still working with our factories um, if selling the Ecosina as well. And that the Ecosina has been designed, you know, it's, it's that design is not changing. There's, there's still place in the market for that. And so we're, you know, we're continuing to work with our factories in, the, in that way. All right, that's, that was our last question. If, uh, if anyone has a question you're dying to ask before we start uh, the next part of this, uh, please unmute yourself and feel free to ask it at this time or, or type it. This is your last chance to ask. Okay, before, so we're gonna do trivia now. Before we start Stove Team Trivia, uh, I want to share my screen and I wanna make sure that everyone is ready to answer the questions via the chat. So please open up the chat. It's this uh, little comment box up here. You can just open it up and have it ready to go. Each question is multiple choice, so you can you can feel free to type the whole answer out if you want to, but it's probably going to be quicker to just type A, B, C, or D into the chat. And uh, two of the, so there are about eight questions. Two of the questions, uh, the winner will receive a hat. And I suppose I should say that to win, you have to be the first to answer correctly. Okay, here we go. All right. How many people cook over open fires worldwide? Is it A, 4 million, B, 100 million, C, 3 billion, or D, 7 billion? Forrest, do you want me to call out the answers? Is that? Yeah, let us know who answers first. Correctly. Okay. 
Uh, Julie, Julie answered C. Perfect. Yeah, that's correct. Three billion people still cook over open fires around the world. Okay, now this one uh, is a hat winning question. How many people are killed by open fire cooking each year? Is it 600,000, 2 million, 4 million, or 10 million? Anybody want to take a stab at it? And no Googling. Well, <laughs> we can't tell if you're Googling. All right, we have Carissa. Uh, answer B. That is actually incorrect. But we appreciate you. We appreciate you, Carissa. Anybody else want to give it a shot? Julie says B, 10 million, also incorrect. Matt says A, incorrect as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we asked this question. All right, who's going to get the hat? Process I, of elimination. <laughs> we, we can go ahead and say you can answer again. Okay. Let's see. We got a winner. Okay. And if you win, I would, we would just ask, just in case, uh, to be to be careful and make sure we can get a hat to everyone. Um, please email us to confirm your address at info at stoveteam.org, and I'll put that address in the chat. Okay. How many people have benefited from Stove Team cook stoves to date? Seventy-six thousand, one hundred and fifty thousand. 450,000 or 550,000. Carissa said, D, that's correct. Over half a million people have uh, stove team cook stoves in their homes. Collecting wood is a struggle because it causes hernias and neck injuries. It often takes 20 hours per week. It is often done by kids or all of the above. Julie said D, that's correct. All of those are issues associated with collecting wood for open fire cooking. Stove teams cook stoves reduce the risk of burns by what percent? Nearly 50, 75, 90, or 100 percent? Carissa says C, incorrect, but close. <laughs> Julie says D, that's correct. And that's because the stoves are, are highly insulated, uh, usually with pumice in an inner chamber. Okay, another hat winning question. Stove teams, Echo Sina, oh, and I should say you cannot win both hats. <laughs> Echo Sina cook stoves reduce CO2 emissions by 750 pounds, one ton, five tons, or 10.5 tons over the course of the life of the stove, on average. Anybody want to guess this one? The buzzer's going to go off. <laughs> Chris asked, is this one? Yes, this is one Echo Cena cook stove. Matt says, B, incorrect. Carissa says, D, that's correct. Carissa is the winner of a stove team hat. Please email us at info at stoveteam.org to confirm your address. Um, and we'll also uh, reach out after this. How many volunteers have traveled with stove team? 33, 255, 312, or 538. Julie says, D, that is correct. Over the course of 33 trips. What simple technology makes stove teams cook stoves so efficient? Is it electric fans, rocket elbow technology, metal planches, or cement construction?
Krista says, B, that's correct. It's the rocket elbow that uh, is a, a chimney that is essentially built into the stove and creates much higher temperatures and allows the wood to be metered. And that's it. Thank you so much for participating, everybody. Uh, we will get in touch with our two winners after this. Yeah. So I just want to say thank you all again for participating. And um, again, I can't tell you how much we appreciate your support. We couldn't do any of this without you. If, um, if you're not on our newsletter, I suspect all of you are, but just please make sure you're on our newsletter so that we can continue to communicate with you throughout the year. And I'd also ask to help us spread the word. If you believe in this mission, you believe in what we're doing, we need all of the support and help that we can get. I just recently looked at the numbers um, for the um, Coalition of Clean Cooking and the on their website, it says that the, the need for improved cook stoves in Guatemala alone is 9.3 million. And over its, its 11, 12 years, stove team has put in 76,300 stoves so that we have a lot of stoves to go and we're making great progress, but we we just, we need all of the support we can get. We need to reach out and, and also just to raise awareness about this issue because a lot of, most people don't know about this, that open fire cooking is, a leading, a leading cause of death of children under the age of five and kills four million people every year. It's every time I talk to people that I don't work with that stove team, I think they don't believe me until I, I, I turn them to the websites and, and it's, it's a, it's, those are shocking numbers. So um, anyway, we, we will continue and continue to, to reach out with you through our newsletter. And please let us know if you ever have any questions or you want to know more about what, what we're up to. We're always willing to hop on the phone or answer emails. So enjoy the rest of your day and uh, continue to stay safe. And hopefully the endless summer party next year, we can have all of us together in one place. <laughs> so. Yeah. All right. Thanks Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.